गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम बैक टू रिलेटेड टेक्नोलॉजी सेशंस सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट एंडिया ग्लेजर्स सो वी हैव स्टडीड व्हाट आर द एनर्जी लेवल्स ऑफ एंडिया ग्लेजर्स एंड वी हैव सीन अ वेरिएट ऑफ एंडिया सिस्टम्स सो दीज आर सम ऑफ देम लाइक व्हिच आर व्हिच आर वर्किंग ऑन डिफरेंट पंपिंग चैंबर्स लाइक दे हैव इंक्रीजिंग द पावर टू गेट द मोर पंप so that you have more laser output okay so and you can get a second harmonic generation of 1064 nanometer so you will get 532 nanometer so you change the different annular crystals to satisfy to get, to satisfy different conditions to achieve third harmonic generation and fourth harmonic generation so in the in that principle like you will get 1064 nanometer You will get second harmonic generation is 532, and your third harmonic generation is 355 nanometers, and your fourth harmonic generation from 266 nanometers. So you have it covers from NIR to almost deep UV, so 266 nanometers. So there are few spectral lines, but it covers the you know, the range of the visible. as well as uv and near ia okay this has many variety of applications we move on so neon based lasers and their parameters so we see in that stable the laser versus the laser parameters so we have nd laser the fundamental wavelength at 1064 nanometers and neon doping is around 1 atomic percentage that means you have a concentration of neodymium ions roughly around 1.38 into 10 power 20 ions per centimeter cube and their metastable lifetime is around 230 microseconds so the line width around 4.5 cm inverse and similar emission cross section is around 2.8 10 power minus 19 cm square so and we studied the line width in terms of Your delta nu is in terms of hedges, right? In the previous classes, we have studied our delta nu in terms of hedges. Now you can you want to convert into centimeter inverse. What you have to do? You substitute your nu is c by lambda. Okay. So now this is the a change in the wavelength. So we. it becomes a partial derivative so you will get c by c is a constant you will get 1 over lambda means minus 1 over lambda square into d lambda so this is a, a spectral width so it it you should take the modulus so you will get your delta, delta nu in terms of c into delta lambda by lambda square so now you need in terms of wave number so that means you only is c by lambda so that is you see comes outside delta of 1 over lambda that equals to c into delta lambda by lambda square you see if it gets cancel now your delta of 1 over lambda is equals to that's in the units of centimeter inverse delta lambda by lambda square so this way you can convert your line width from hedge to centimeter inverse is it clear this one so similarly whatever i am showing here it's 4.5 cm inverse you convert into hedges so you will get the whatever we have discussed in our previous classes okay so now your ndi laser system having line width of 4.5 cm inverse and we have different neodymium based lasers so one of that one is ndi and similarly yvo4 so that is also a fundamental wavelength at 1064 nanometer and neodymium doping is 1 atomic percentage and the concentration is 1.5 so into 10 power 20 ions per centimeter cube 
and metastable lifetime is around 98 microseconds its line width is 11.3 and your stimulated emission cross section is around 7.6 and also there is the NDR based laser is yttrium lithium and fluoride oxide fluoride so that is the fundamental wavelength at 1053 nanometers the neodymium doping is 1 atomic percent so so one atomic percent means you take the atomic weight of this neodymium and you multiply with 0 0.01 so that is your one atomic percent you are doping into your YLIF4 crystal so that gives you 1.3 neodymium ions per centimeter cube 1.3 into 10 power 20 ions per centimeter cube so the metastable lifetime around 450 the line width will be 13 centimeter inverse and the stimulated emission cross section is around 1.9 into 10 to minus 19 and the other type of neodymium based laser is ND glass so the fundamental wavelength at 1054 nanometers the neodymium concentration when you do with the one atomic percentage is around 3.2 into 10 power 20 ions per centimeter cube the metastable lifetime is around 300 microseconds and line width around 180 centimeter inverse and the estimated emission cross section is around 10 power minus 18 order centimeter square ok so these are the different neodymium based lasers which are available and now we will discuss discuss about yttrium lasers so instead of neodymium we are doping yttrium lasers so these lasers in principle called as a quasi three level systems ok the quasi three level system what exactly happens when you have a medium doped with the active ions the intrinsic levels of electrons or the dopants of ions are split and shifted by host crystal field ok so in principle what kind of uh, ions you can dope generally people will use a rare earth ions so like neodymium erbium and thulium holmium ok these number of ions can be replaced you see these are all with the charge of 3 plus so they are generally used to having a replacement of ions in the different crystals so they are optically active so what happens in principle you have two energy levels for example in the yttrium laser you have a transition from 2f7 to 7 by 2 to 2f5 by 2 so these energy levels so now what happens when you apply a field so either you through optical field or your electric field what happens the energy levels will get split so once these energy levels get split so now you have optically yellow transitions so in this case you can pump using around near air wavelengths uh, 541 nanometer and 568 nanometers you pump to higher exit states now so you have a lazing from uh, in the bottom of these energy levels in the higher exit states to one of the states it will release around 10330 nanometers for yttrium lasers so now you see it's a three level system now this is one level you consider these are all excitations are one level and you have the ground level and there is a, a metastable state you can consider the metastable state so that's it's overall it prefer as a three level system but in principle it is a two level system but this is degeneracy is lifted when you are applying an optical field or electric field so that's why it generally these systems are called quasi three level systems so these are called quasi lasers quasi three level lasers and we can compare different uh, quasi level systems with the, their laser parameters as we see here again this table consists of laser and laser parameters so here i am talking about a uh, yttrium laser so your yttrium is doped into a YAG crystal so where aluminum ions are replaced with the YAG uh, yttrium so the wavelength is around 1030 nanometers so their metastable lifetime is 1.16 milliseconds ok and their line width is around 8.6 cm inverse so the stimulated absorption cross sections 
or around 10 power minus 20 centimeter square. So in this case here, where we have 1.8 for the stimulated emission cross section and absorption cross section is 0 0.12. And also one of your NDA glazer system also different energy levels. In previously we have seen the four level system, and this also can act as a quasi three level system when you apply different energy levels. And we know when you have different wavelengths, your laser cavity can decide or you can tune what wavelengths to uh, as a output with the different mode selections. So now this NDR system also can give a quasi three level system. So where the output wavelength will be around 946 nanometers. So where the metastable lifetime is around 0 0.23 milliseconds. So the line width around 9.5 centimeter inverse and stimulated emission around 10 power minus 20 centimeter square and absorption cross section is 0 0.29 10 power minus 20 centimeters second square. So in principle, our NDI laser also gives a quasi three level system, but, but most commonly used is four level system. So that is 1064 nanometer wavelength. And you also have uh, different dopings, like as I mentioned in the previous slide, your different rare earth ions will be doped into your eye crystals. So like thulmium and holmium, you doped in into your crystal so that gives you the energy levels which is suitable to release 2091 nanometers the metastable lifetime is around 8.5 milliseconds the line widths are around 42 centimeter inwards and these are the stimulated emission and absorption cross sections and there will be you can do atrium and erbium into the glass. So these are the two different ions you are doping. Then your energy levels are suitable to release 1540 nanometers, and the metastable lifetime will be around 8 milliseconds. And their line widths around 120, and they have similar uh, stimulated and absorption cross sections. Okay. So the, these are the different YAG lasers are available. So you have seen neodymium doped YAG lasers and atrium doped. So erbium dope. So all rare earth ions you can dope into your crystals. Okay. So these are giving a different fundamental wavelengths. So then you can convert into second harmonic and third harmonic generations. You can cover the different spectral lines in your visible and UV light. See these NDR lasers can operate either continuous wave or pulsed waves. So, as we know that once you have a continuous laser, we can always using different optical techniques to, uh, to get the pulse laser output. So this way, your NDR lasers can be operated in both operations and their average output will range from few watt to few kilowatts. So that depending upon your cavity design and your pumping mechanisms, so that can range from few watt to few kilowatt so that you can use a flash lamp or you can use a laser different lasers to pump ok so these all decides your output power ok so this is all about your NDR lasers so the Tysopher is the most famous, famous laser system from 80s so still it is a dominating laser system in wide variety of uh, applications Okay, so now the current technology is still based on the Tysafer laser systems, but in the future we will be replaced this Tysafer lasers by with the fiber lasers. So now the fiber lasers are picking up, so that we will discuss in the fiber laser section. But nowadays current the current technology is depending upon the Tysafer lasers. So these Tysafer lasers is actually capture the the leasing market okay so these are very famous laser systems so the tysafer laser system is your titanium ions will be doped into aluminum oxide okay so that means you have a aluminum oxide so then your aluminum ions will be replaced with your titanium ions okay so then what happens if you see your absorption spectrum of this matrix so in principle you have a tysafer crystal 
but the type sapphire crystal has a absorption which ranges from 400 nanometers to around 650 nanometers now if you see here this is our absorption spectrum so it has a, a broad absorption so that it can absorb all these wavelengths and the peaking at around close to 510 or 520 and now you have this is absorption spectrum and you have steady state emission that is what you are called a spontaneous emission spectrum you can get like this so now this is your a broad emission okay so the, this your general emission spectra is your gain curve so that means so these are the wavelengths you are getting from your excited state okay this is a spontaneous emission now we know how to convert your spontaneous emission to a stimulated emission so now what we do when these states in the metastable state we will come with the pump so that we trigger the emission so when you trigger the emission that is your stimulated emission so that means you convert all this spontaneous emission into a stimulated emission but your stimulated emission you have to tune the range because your cavity will decide what are the modes to oscillate within the cavity so that means you are get very narrow spectrum for the stimulated emission but what you can do is you can tune across this range from your 650 nanometers to around almost a thousand nanometers you can tune whatever the wavelength you want by designing your cavity so if you your cavity is designed such a way that you can move your cavity length so that means your one of the mirror on a, a delay stage so then it's a computer controlled delay stage you change the length of your cavity by applying certain voltage to your delay stage it will move okay so that way you can automatically change the wavelength so that means you, you, this gives you access to tune your tisafir laser from 650 nanometers to almost 1000 nanometers whatever the wavelength you want okay so that is the tunability you will get from your tisafir laser but the central wavelength in principle is oscillating at 800 nanometers so most of the types of lasers are operating at 800 nanometers but you, you, you will be given access to tune okay so there will be little complexity in the experimental part but with a good amount of training it is possible to tune your types of laser system across your emission range okay so these energy levels is like this so these are your electronic states and in your you know that you in the electronic states you have vibrational states so now you are you are pumping from one electronic state to other electronic state the higher electronic states so the pumping common pumping because you see around 500 nanometers you have a large absorption so that is the reason most of these types of lasers are pumped using either 514 nanometer or 532 nanometers and now you see this 540 and 532 nanometers you will get from the NDA glazes we know that NDA glazer fundamental wavelength is 1064 nanometer so what is the second harmonic generation of 1064 that is our 532 nanometer okay similarly other family of NDI laser systems NDYLF that will gives you the second harmonic generation it's close to 510 nanometers so these lasers these NDI lasers generally will be used to pump your tisafir crystal most of the in laser most of the tisafir laser systems you will use NDI lasers as a pumping source so now what happens when you pump to higher vibrational states in the excited energy level electronic exit energy level so these relaxations it's a non radio non relaxation so it's quite instantaneous and fast to lower vibrational energy level from there this vibrational energy level the lower vibrational energy level in the high ex excited electronic state it is lifetime around 3.2 microseconds so after 3.2 microseconds it has a emission 
so this is our spontaneous emission to lower state so from there it goes to ground state so this is the relaxation process of your tyrosphere energy levels so now this state can be triggered to have a stimulated emission so now as you see here so this is your one of the tyrosphere laser so as you see this is a bright spot as you, in, in, this is actually a crystal a tyrosphere crystal you are pumping using a, a green light so that is your 514 nanometer or 532 nanometer so you are pumping in these crystals okay then you have a emission across this from 650 to 1000 nanometers so most of the peak wavelength around 18 nanometer okay so now these are the laser parameters the types of your laser system parameters so the matrix is your aluminum oxide crystal the active ions are types of uh, titanium so the Cholmuel wavelength range from 650 to 1180 nanometers so now you have these are the fundamental wavelengths you can convert to second harmonic generation you have a range of 325 to 590 nanometers and you convert to third harmonic generation you get 252 to 267 now you see you have a wavelength range from 250 to 1080 nanometers and a continuous tuning you can tune using different nonlinear crystals you can tune from 250 to 1180 nanometers and also we can get fourth harmonic generation so yeah so fourth harmonic generation you can still go to lower wavelength range okay so this is about the tunability of types of laser so the level of the skin is four level as we see so now this is our consider your ground state and this is the excited state which has a shorter lifetime and goes to lower excited state with the metastable lifetime that is around 3.2 microseconds then you are going to here to this is your leasing action energy levels and then it goes to ground state these are four level system and for 800 nanometer the photon energy is 1.55 electron volts so you can convert your formula from 1240 by whatever the wavelength in nanometers that you will give you energy in electron volts this is the photon energy of your 800 nanometer so the lifetime is around 3.2 microseconds at room temperature so this is very clear the temperature changes the crystal temperature changes the crystal is depending upon the temperature so you have changes the temperature of your crystal this lifetime change okay so that way that means you are affecting your laser parameters so that will give the instability of your laser parameters so that means you have to maintain the room temperature conditions to do that we have different techniques like water cooling and air cooling and a air cooling so this kind of a cooling systems we use to cool down the crystal to maintain the temperature so the main pumping bands from 510 to 530 nanometers as it has a peaking absorption around these wavelengths so this operational mode of our laser system it can run from continuous to a pulse laser so it has different pulse widths in continuous you have continuous lasing and your pulse widths can range from microseconds to femtoseconds using a different optical techniques either using a q switch you will generate nanosecond pulses from moon locking you can generate from picoseconds to femtoseconds the average output powers will range from 50 watt to 50 watt in the continuous or in the free running laser that is at the 10 microsecond pulses and as you go to shorter pulses the average energy will decrease but peak energy will go higher so the average energies will be 1 joule and you go even shorter pulses the average energy will decrease but the peak energy will increase and the repetition rate can range from 1 hertz to 10, 100 kilohertz in the microsecond regime of your pulse laser for the nanoseconds it repetition at 1 to 40 hertz for the 
from per second or picosecond, it, it can get 10 to 100 megahertz the reputation rate. Okay, so as we mentioned, the cooling systems will be water or plenty of coolings. Or nowadays we can use different good con good air con like air cooling systems also available. Okay, so that's all about the type of laser system.